students, this is my new house. Yesterday was my birthday. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Bruce and uh, I'm your Students' Union President. And I like making videos. Sick man, I love videos. Yeah, videos. So this is a very important video because if you are a basketball student at this moment, then the information in this video will very likely affect you. This video is about parking. <laughs> specifically about the parking proposals that the university initially put forward in June this year, which have now been revised and are due to be implemented as of this very moment. I know some of you guys have wanted to hear about what's going on with this issue for a while now, so uh, hopefully by the end of this video we'll have done that. This video will be split into five parts. Number one, why has this happened in the first place? Number two, what the university initially did. Number three, what you said in response. Number four, what the university subsequently did. And number five, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here now? So number one, why has this happened in the first place? The university has stated that there's a legal commitment to reduce parking by 11% at Newton Park by 2020. So in numbers terms, according to the university's car parking management plan, which is issued on August 7th of this year, there will be 775 car parking spaces this academic year. So an 11% reduction means that car parking has to be reduced by 85 spaces by 2020. If done over an incremental basis, this works out approximately 14 spaces per year. The university will be checked up on this year by the council to ensure that steps are being taken in order to reach this goal. And the university is also waiting for confirmation from the council that they're happy with the car parking schemes overall. Unfortunately, more cuts on parking are possible due to the given pressure from the local community regarding traffic in Bath, uh, which contributes to part of the reason why the schemes have begun now as opposed to waiting till 2018 or something. The university has also stated that environmental and congestion factors are motivation for this. Additionally, every year student numbers are on the rise, so difficulties associated with parking are likely to escalate. So it's clear that something had to be done soon. So in response to these issues and the legal commitment, here's what the university did. The university presented their main proposals and then began consultation for both staff and students in June this year. This came as quite a surprise and we were disappointed we were unable to discuss these before the university decided to issue them. For students, the three initial proposals were Number one, all students living in BA1 and BA2 are banned from driving on to Cyan Hill and Newton Park campus. The area of this proposed ban is as shown here. As many of you pointed out, this is really big. And it goes as far as 11 miles away from the university, which takes approximately half an hour by car anyway, meaning bus journeys for any banned students in outer parts of these areas would be looking at some seriously long bus times. Number two, Students outside the BA1 slash BA2 band area must purchase a permit for £120 per year in order to park on any campus, including blue badge holders. As many of you pointed out, an increase from £0 to £120 is rather considerable and students are not Richard Branson. <coughs> Number three. Students are encouraged to car share and specific car sharing bays will be made available until 11am after which they will become available to everyone. So these three proposals were then issued out to students and staff for consultation and feedback. And here's what you said. What you say, what you say, what you say, what? In the interest of time, here's the main points. For proposal one, the ban of BA1 slash BA2, 72.6 of students oppose the ban. For proposal 2, the charging £120 per year for a permit, 83% of students disagreed in principle. So that's regardless of the price of the permit, student 83% of students disagreed regardless of what that price was. For proposal 3, the car sharing proposal, 34.3% of students disagreed, 31.9% of students agreed and 33.8% were neutral. Along with this, there was a vast amount of written feedback that the university received from you guys as to why you agreed or disagreed with the proposals. So number four, what the university subsequently did. For proposal one, the BA1 slash BA2 ban, as shown here, was reduced to BA11, BA12, BA13, and BA23, as shown here. 
This applies for all new students and not returning students, except those with exceptional circumstances which the university will deal with on a per case basis, and I or another student representative will sit on the panel to represent the student voice on that one. Cyan Hill students are exempt from this ban, but if they live in any of the aforementioned areas and they purchase a permit, they can only park on Cyan Hill campus. For proposal two, the charge has now been reduced from £120 per year to £10 per year, with the addition of £1 tickets purchased every day that you come onto campus to park. But those additional £1 tickets will not be introduced until January the 1st. Alternatively, you can pay the entire £120 as was in the initial proposal without having to ever pay for a single validation permit on the day. You just pay for the £120 outright to park at any time without additional cost. Also, blue badge holders can now park free of charge. For proposal three, students can now buy car sharing permits to split the cost between up to four people. And also more car sharing bays have been made available by Main House and in the car park next to the Newton building. So number five, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here now? So just a quick recap. Quick, quick, quick. The university is obliged to reduce parking at Newton Park campus by 11% by 2020, which translates as 85 spaces over six years. There are also clear and reasonable environmental and congestion motivations. Charges are being introduced to both staff and students at Newton Park and Cyan Hill, despite the fact that there's no legal obligation to reduce parking at Cyan Hill, although the campus does suffer from overcrowding. The university came out with these proposals in June 2014 without initial discussion with staff and students. They then consulted with staff and students on these initial proposals and made quite significant concessions based on the feedback. And now the revised proposals have been finalised and the consultation period is over. Okay, so this is the important bit. Throughout this consultation, students have remained opposed to charging in principle, regardless of the price, and a number of students have contacted the union as to whether there will be any protests over this. The other unions at the university, UCU and Unison, have also re remained opposed to charging in principle throughout. UCU stands for University and College Union, which uh, is the union for all the academic staff at the university. And Unison, in the context of the university, is all the professional services staff. These guys are being charged 0.2% of their salary in order to park. We've been working with these unions as to the wisest way of approaching this issue and have asked the university to revoke all the current proposals, get all the unions round the table and start with the initial problems of legal obligation, uh, environmental impact and congestion and come up with solutions together. But obviously the university management is sticking with the current proposals. So what now, I hear you ask? A joint union survey has been created. If you wish to see more done to resist these changes, please fill it in. Just as importantly, if you're happy with the current proposals and want us to stop making a fuss uh, for something you deem to be perfectly reasonable, please fill it in. The survey essentially asks as to whether you're willing to accept the current proposals for parking and which of the direct actions in opposition of them you'd be willing to participate in or not. Wherever you are watching this video, whether on YouTube or on the Union website, you will find the survey below, either in the description or embedded onto the website. Please fill it in. D did I mention, um, can you, can you fill it in? The purpose of the actions within the survey would all be for the university management to postpone introducing parking charges for a year and work with the unions to devise a new incentive scheme to be piloted for 12 months. That's it. This will also go to student council, along with the feedback from this survey and the prior consultation to decide whether the students' union itself should work to resist these proposals. Okay, Ugh. I hope this video has brought you all up to date. I would usually put links for more information in the description, but uh, to avoid confusion, I'm only gonna leave the one in the for the survey. Uh, <laughs> if you have any further questions about this, feel free to contact me on supresident at bathspa.ac.uk and we can talk through it, clarify things, and generally be best mates. Thanks for watching, and I hope you uh, feel this is a satisfactory way of dealing with the situation. It's been a difficult and time-consuming issue, um, and I hope you get your voice heard. Cheers. Peace out.